Hey everybody, Digital Doc here, and welcome to the very first episode three of Digital Doc Interviews. I am excited to have Simon Hill here. Simon is the 2019 Presenter of the Year nominee for the UK Esports. He is a backstage interviewer at TNT Wrestling. He has his own wrestling podcast, and he is an ambassador at Safe in Our World, which is a charity organization for fostering positive mental health all across the video game industry. Simon, it's so glad to have you. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm grand. I'm grand. Thank you so much for, for having me. I really appreciate the invite. So yeah, thank you very much. Oh, but I'm good. I'm, How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, I, I, I have switched my video service after our last one was not working. We, we had some technical difficulties, but we are here, we are talking, and all is good. <laughs> <laughs> you can never rely on technology, but we got there in the end. We got, we got there, there in the end. That's right. Hard work pays off. So, Simon, uh, I'm going to give it to you right off the bat. I want to hear, hear about you. I, I gave my, my rough uh, introduction, but I think you could probably do a better job than I did. I, I don't know, man. I think that was that was like one of the best introductions I've had. You just put me <laughs> over so well. Uh, but yeah, no, you you got everything spot on. So uh, I've I've spent a long time as a presenter, both in radio and TV, that elevated then into the gaming world, uh, where I spent a lot of years hosting various gaming TV shows, uh, stage shows, the likes of PlayStation and hosting the Just Dance World Cup finals, things like this, you know. And eventually that, yeah, that did uh, land me in the nominations for the 2019 Presenter of the Year uh, Award at the UK Esports Awards, which was so random. I just woke up to that email one day uh, saying, you've been nominated. And I was like, what? Are you, have you got the right guy? <laughs> like, and was that, that was for something for esports? It was indeed, yeah. So I had done various uh, esports at that time, working with the likes of uh, Belong, who are run by Game, which is a huge retailer here in the UK for for gaming. And I'd also done some stuff like Capcom with Street Fighter and things like that, as well yeah. as yeah, Ubisoft, and worked all around. I feel like I've been been at so many places; it's unreal. But there's still so much I want to do. But uh, I was very thankful for that. That nomination, again, it was just one of those kind of reading the email, having to read that email about four times to make sure this was <laughs> legit. And was it like uh, a, a full show that you got to go to? You got to put yeah. on your tux? Oh, man, I, I went out and I bought a bow tie. Uh, you know, <laughs> got this this beautiful uh, suit that I, I was very proud of. And, yeah, it was a full show, man. You know, the... You know, the circle tables that you see at the BAFTAs and, you know, the whole pretty lighting and all this stuff. And I was just like, man, like, why am I here? <laughs> <laughs> so how did you originally get into presenting in the video game world at video game shows? Uh, so I, I, I'm going to rewind to to come to the answer to that question. So I started in radio. And I used to listen to a radio station here in the UK uh, called Kerrang Radio. And they used to have a nighttime show that was quite adult orientated. It was the most popular nighttime show in the country. And I I was just that guy who used to have to listen to it every night, 10 p.m. And I was so excited for it every day. And I remember listening to the presenter used to say, look, if anybody wants to come in and check out the show, because it was like a full production. Obviously, you can't see what's going on. But, you know, they they create this world, this right. image that there's so much going on. So, anyway, I used to, and I got in touch with the studio. I was only 19 at the time, so I was very young. And, um, you know, I was kind of just just partying at the time, as you do as a young 19-year-old. And I uh, reached out, and I just used to sit in the studio every Monday just watching all this amazing stuff happen. I was like, this is so cool. And I didn't go for a couple of months and I can't remember what I was doing with my life at the time, but then I got a call from the show producer. I still to this day have no idea how she got my number, but she <laughs> did. Um, and she gave me a call and was like, we need a runner on the show. You know, you know the show. We know you enjoy it. Do you want to come and do it? And I was like, holy yes. <laughs> and this really was at do. 19 years old, partying yeah. Simon? 
Yeah, party so song. You put down the beer and you're like, give me a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's how it happened. Uh, literally, there was, it was that exact transition. And the thing was, I was surrounded by so many talented individuals in that office. And I would dedicate hours and hours of my life, even to the point where I was working for free. Uh, you know, it was work experience uh, for a long time. And own my craft and at, at the time and the presenter now you know and obviously we're, we're great friends these days but he on a, my first show there he didn't like me he was like i don't like the way he speaks the way he comes across or anything like this and the producer fought my corner was like look he's new just let him you know we'll train him up blah 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 and um <laughs> and yeah it was it was that was the greatest time of my life like wow. those three and a half years at Kerrang Radio were the greatest moments of my entire career still to this day because I learned so much, but I learned from some of the best in the industry. And I got to go there every day, have fun, talk to thousands of people. Uh, and we, we'd go on to win multiple radio awards. Wow. And it was just one of those crazy experiences, you know, we would get... We would get like David Beckham's tattooist in and we would get <laughs> him to do some crazy stuff that you would never, never expect. And, you know, talking about wrestling now, there was a time we, we had British wrestlers and this is before UK wrestling was a was a really big thing. Uh -huh. uh, and we used to get those in, in the show. And I remember that the presenter, Tim Shaw at the time, would go on air and um, he would put out this this audacious thing going right people if you want to if you want to hear my character was called Don Cole at the time there's a story <laughs> behind that as well um if you want to hear Don Cole get slammed live on air by one of these professional wrestlers oh then you God. know vote yes well two and a half thousand texts came in voting yes <laughs> so I was like oh no now outside of the Krang studios it's like a metal flooring almost it was it wasn't a soft landing. So anyway, this happened and he slammed me on this metal flooring and they, they did the whole wrestling gimmick spiel, you know, right, right. Uh, they kind of picked me up as I'm winded <laughs> and just, uh, you know, and you, like, you oh, had man. no idea this was about to happen. No, had no idea. No You're idea. You're just about to get totally the wind knocked oblivious. out of you. Yeah. So basically I went out there with a microphone, I was just doing an interview and Tim had obviously prepped someone to take the microphone from me at some point. And that happened and he just picked me up and slammed me. And I was just <laughs> like, God. but what happened then is they did this little gimmick spiel. And then without me knowing again, picked me up and slammed me again. And because I was still on the floor winded, I missed my next link. Yeah. Uh, so somebody else had to go and do it. And I was just like, oh man. So yeah, we got to have that sort of fun live That's on awesome. air. Uh, you know, to an entire nation. It was incredible. Yeah, definitely the best time of my life. Sorry for like rambling there, but yeah. No, really well, you know, time. Simon, Tim actually called me and you thought this was just a normal interview. But if you look <laughs> out your window right now, there is an army of wrestlers ready <laughs> to come back and seek their revenge. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't surprise me. That wouldn't surprise me. You um, thought your radio yeah, no, days were over. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, you know, there's there's times that I'd still like to, you know, go back to radio. But unfortunately, you know, obviously I'm not sure what it's what it's like in the States at the moment. I used to actually listen to a lot of American radio growing up on the, on the app tuning radio. Mm -hmm. uh, you sure. know, stuff like K-Rock and um, oh, the, the one in L.A. was really big and Sirius Network and all that yeah. sort of stuff. So, um, but yeah, there was, uh, you know, radio's been toned down a lot in the uk a lot of it is you have 30 seconds to say the artist's name say what's coming up and then you go into the next song so uh unfortunately yeah you don't get the five to ten sure. minutes where you get to just have a bit of fun sure uh, but sure. yeah you know i'll haul, i'll always hold radio close to the heart for sure wow so you're working as a 19 20 21 year old as this radio host a huge break for you you describe it as the time of your life and then Obviously, it sounds like radio is a passion of yours and was a passion of yours at the time. How does that get to video games? So I would then go on because I was a passionate gamer anyway. And 
after I left Karanga, I went to another radio station, but only part time. And I was writing, so I was I was journalist for various gaming outlets, even created my own eventually. And I would, you know, go on to write reviews and articles and things like this. And I always had this idea of, do you know what? There's nothing like there's no gaming TV shows anymore. Like when I was growing up, there was one called Games Master, which was great. Um, and what was Games Master? So Games Master was like a, um, it was on terrestrial TV here in the UK, and it was like a fun game show built around video games. So they would get, you know, guests in who were, you know, young, young teenagers, and they would have to play like Ridge Racer against each other or, you know, have to get a, a perfect time on Sonic the Hedgehog or something. You know, it was That's awesome. It was this sort of stuff, and it this was really, like e really cool. Esports before esports. Esports, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And it was so much fun, and it was very captivating, very entertaining. Uh, and I was just like, man, we like, there's so much market for this. Like, so I came up with a pitch and wrote my own treatment, and this is something that I'd never done before. Um, you know, went to various people in the industry on what they thought, added and, you know, take, taken away things and, you know, built this treatment, took, took a while um, and pitched it to a TV company and they just snapped it up like that. Really? So then I, yeah, literally we had this big meeting and uh, sat with producers, exec, executive producers and, um, you know, owner of, of various TV stations and, th and this one just picked it up straight away and I was like, <laughs> like, Awesome. I thought this would have been like a, you know, three-year process where I'd have yeah. to write several treatments and, uh, yeah. So that happened, and we filmed the pilot at a live, uh, gaming convention here in the UK. And I remember doing the intro under this sixty-foot Tie Fighter, um, <laughs> which, that's and, you awesome. know, that, that's a that's a dream for a lot of people, I guess. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I was just and I just had a crowd and. You know, I'm not going to lie. I was very nervous. Uh, you know, just hundreds of people watching me, cameras, lights everywhere. Right. Doing this intro under a 60-foot tie fire. I was like, I've got to get this right. <laughs> You're just hoping that tie doesn't come crashing down. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And then that was my transition into the gaming world and being a presenter within the gaming universe. Because after that and after the first season, when people started looking at me as like, oh, this this guy's around you know he's doing stuff within the industry and he's really you know making waves and then i was given other opportunities uh fortunately uh, a lot of them were actually by 2k you know they gave me very stage slots interviews you know um uh, they hired me to interview Kyrie irving uh, at a hotel that in must London. have been pretty Did cool you know what dude that was such a great experience i remember getting the call and i was like do you mean like the the real guy, like the real Kyrie Irving? Like, <laughs> so uh, again, it's one of just so shock moments, you know. Uh, yeah, well, that just that led to more opportunities with Two K. Uh, eventually, when uh, they gave me an opportunity to interview some WWE stars, obviously they produced WWE Two K, and that stuff would only get bigger and better. And I, I ended up on uh, PlayStation Access stage, and again we did uh, a big playthrough with NBA Two K. I was called a an NBA 2K specialist at that point. Um, and yeah, I was on, on stage PlayStation Access and that was incredible. And then I got the wow. opportunity to, I, I got invited by Ubisoft to host the Just Dance World Cup Finals 2019. And mm -hmm. I'll, I'll be honest with you, and they, they know this anyway, that I had no interest in this game whatsoever. Right, right. You know, I, I'm not a good dancer in the slightest, and I don't think a game would ever help me. Yeah. So uh, I'm, a, I'm much, so much a lost cause with that. But I was like, you know what? This is a great opportunity. It's a big IP. It's a huge company. And it's on a live stage in front of a live crowd. So I went, I did it. It was a four-day event on stage talking for nine hours straight. And how I managed it, I don't know. By the end of it, my vocal cords were shot. Um, but wow. it was possibly the most adrenaline fueled energetic stage show I've ever hosted. And I mean, it those shows, incredible. they have like real professional dancers playing these oh, games. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's pretty, yeah. it's pretty awesome. Yeah, I, I was just reading a book um, uh, 
it's called something along the lines of uh, Evan in the other room, but video game teaching uh, emotion through video games, emotion through yeah. design. And they talked about Just Dance uh, and they, you know, it was a decision they made um, at some point uh, in development to not show the person, the, the player on the screen. I think originally it was more of like, you know, a mirror type thing. And instead they showed this avatar who no matter what you're doing looks great. You know, the avatar yeah. looks like a fantastic <laughs> dancer and it makes you feel better about yourself, less, uh, less self-conscious. And it makes you, you know, um, feel confident and, and, you know, whether you look good or not, maybe there'll be rooms, room for, for improvement. But these people at these shows certainly look good. Oh, man, they really do. And, and, and even the ones that, you know, were, were slightly amateur, they, again, they, they have that self-confidence, that aura about them. That they're like, you know, I'm going to try and I'm going to beat the best, you know. Yeah. And we would get, like, every time a record was broken or score was, was broken, things like this, the crowd would go nuts. So it was just, it's such a passionate community. And you're right, it really does tie into that emotional attachment the, you know, these guys are focused on that silhouette on screen, that avatar right. that really does project the best out of people. Right. And I think that was part of the charm, you know, it's, that's why people are so invested in it because there is that feeling of, I can do this no matter what, because, you know, whether you get a good score, a great score, an amazing score, you get a score and that's self-satisfying. And I really, really, feel I, I have a very soft spot for that community after being given that opportunity um that's awesome. you know and again yeah that was so now you're a great just dance player you play it every day <laughs> <laughs> it was um it was a great experience certainly and i i definitely be up for doing that again 100 percent wow uh, right. and yeah that that would then trans tra that, you know to answer the original question about 20 minutes ago i then you know, got another opportunity uh, with Belong uh, to host their entire Wii Sport, uh, eSports winter uh, uh, finals, which was unreal, you know, to just get that straight off the cuff. And yeah, we, we hosted the FIFA 20 winter finals, uh, League of Legends, uh, Rocket League, all these incredible games. Uh, Overwatch was unbelievable. The community passion, and it's like being at a football stadium when you're hosting uh, an Overwatch final. It's unbelievable because wow. there is so much dedication uh, and people are really invested in that. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, again, a lot of energy, a yeah. lot of um, just fun, memorable moments. And, yeah, during that transition from my time from Deep Silver into then getting back into the, the presenting side, that's when I was nominated for the esports stuff. Uh, so I got that email, randomly woke up, you've been nominated for presenter of the year. And like the list of people I was nominated with, I was like, these guys are some of the best in wow. Europe. Like, <laughs> how am I amongst this list? But yeah, it's just been such a great journey. You know, talking about it now, you know, during like, you know, what's been happening recently, you start to lose sight of what you've achieved and what you've done sure. because there's so so many difficult things going on in the world for so many difficult uh, so many people that are going through their own difficult times and you know i think this interview just in that last 20 minutes has just made me realize i sh i am so lucky for what i've been given you know the yeah. opportunities that i've been given you know um i'm very fortunate to have such amazing people around that's amazing. Uh, so yeah, that's that's kind of the story, I think. <laughs> well, that's awesome, and and it, just hearing the story, it is so cool for me. One of the things that I, I like to think about is how when you're work, you know, you're moving every day through life, things kind of seem random, and you know, you have this job, and maybe this opportunity comes up, and and you know, maybe something you don't like, but then when you look back at it over a span of months or years you see that it was all very linear and you couldn't have gotten yeah. to, you know, the end. You couldn't have gotten to that stage being that presenter of the year nominee without first having that radio job. And Absolutely. And I couldn't agree more. I think, I think, you know, every, every story has a meaning to your next adventure, right? So, right. right. You know, it's right. a very video game uh, 
you know, line right there, right? That should be the yeah, tagline of the next an Uncharted 5, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we need to talk Uncharted, dude. Yeah, yeah so speaking of Uncharted, uh, Simon, how I found you was because I was looking at Safe in Our World, um, which we'll, we'll talk about soon as well. And you published an article over there um, along the lines, uh, I believe the title was, uh, Nathan Drake didn't just save Elena Fisher's life. Uh, he saved mine too. So yeah. I read through that article and was very moved. This is required reading for the episode. Everyone go check out Simon's article. Uh, it's very well written. Um, Thank you. But I'd love to talk about this. Uh, first of all, Uncharted 2, the game that it's about, is, is my favorite game. So I'm ready to kind of dive into the Uncharted <laughs> a little bit. Uh, sure. But I want to hear what happened. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I've always been very outspoken about mental health and Safe in Our World is an incredible organization that supports, helps and guides people who, you know, may need that extra bit of help to look at, you know, what they need to do to help them start to, you know, I, I don't think there's ever a perfect life, but I think, you know, to <clears throat> to look at a more positive outlook in life and how you can improve your quality of life to, you know, improve that mental stability. And Safe in Our World was one of those I was approached by uh, Neil Broadhead, who who is one of the co-founders, who's a great friend of mine, known Neil for a very long time. And he approached me asking if I wanted to be an ambassador for Safe in Our World. And it, there was no hesitation from me mm -hmm. uh, because... I have suffered from mental health myself uh, a lot, uh, even recently during the pandemic. Uh, you know, I've gone back down a similar route. I'm, you know, I'm on I'm on a great path and supported by many amazing people that are helping me through that. And I wanted to help others, uh, you know, in that field. And I always wanted to explore that. I just wasn't sure how to. Uh, but Neil gave me that platform and that opportunity again to reach out to people. And he asked me if I would write an article um, about past experiences with mental yeah. health. And again, as difficult as writing that was, uh, it was something that I was very honoured to, to, you know, be asked to do. So, you know, I, I sat on the edge of my sofa for a couple of hours and, you know, there was a lot of typing and then, you know, then deleting certain things and go, because I didn't, it's a very hard thing to put across. You know, I feel although mental health is, you know, there's a lot more support out there these days. It's still a very difficult subject. Um, so, you know, I, and there were even times where I, wipe, I was wiping tears off my own keyboard because it made me rethink of those times that, I was in a really bad place. So <clears throat> when it came to, you know, the subject, I was like, you know, I remember the time that I was going through this really, really tough, um, you know, moment in my life where I just didn't know what to do, where to turn, who to turn to, how to tackle it. Uh, but I do remember that there was a time where there was this amazing game that came out um, and it was Uncharted 2. And I remember going into my local game store, seeing it on the shelf. And I was like, oh, the first one was incredible. Like, you know, a lot of people just like, oh, it's just male Tomb Raider. But there's so much more to right. it than that for me. Um, and I was like, it's a no brainer. So, yeah, I, I remember playing through Uncharted 2 and just being gripped uh from start to finish i spent many many hours playing that game and there was a point in that game as you probably may remember where drake uh, would go on to save elena who was in danger she was you know it, it didn't look good for her and i thought i thought you know what that captures everything about what happened to me because i think if you uncharted 2 <laughs> Sorry. No, sorry. Uncharted 2 gave me a release that I needed at that time to tackle my own inner struggles. And I connected a lot with Drake in that. And I think Drake, you know, is that character. He's so close to living his dreams every time. And he's so close to just, 
you know, capturing everything he wants. But at the last minute, something goes wrong and something will crumble between him and that will just, you know, um, it, it's it's not a reality for him. And and I felt, you know what, that's just so sick. That's what I've been going through. Uh, you know, fighting so hard to make things happen for myself, just like Drake. Uh, but something at the last minute, you know, comes along and that's, you know, shuts it down, as to say. Um, so, yeah, I felt that Uncharted 2 was a very important subject uh where that would be my uh that would be the perfect thing for me to associate with the gaming community is look there are outlets out there that will help you with your mental health because you will be able to find something that you can connect with your experiences as well just like drake did with me right um so yeah and th the response was incredible you know i never i didn't do this article in you know to to think i'm only doing this like for myself it was it was something i wanted to do for other people but it was it was more of a like how can i share my experiences yeah. you know what i mean um i'm probably not choosing the, the the best wording here but it was one of those you know, I didn't expect it to reach so many people. And then obviously the message I got from you the other day, I was, I felt the need to tweet about that. So I just, it still humbles me that that, you know, can help others. Right. Uh, and that, you know, that you can't ask for more than that. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you for writing it. And I, I think, I think anyone who reads it, especially if they play games, especially if they know Uncharted can relate to things like that. And you hit on just such a great point that is the reason I started this channel. And it's because video games are unlike any other medium. I mean, you can watch a movie about a character that you can sympathize with and, and right, Indiana Jones is almost a, a, a parallel <laughs> to Uncharted in many ways. Um, but most people, maybe some, but most people probably aren't on the verge of tears thinking about Indiana Jones and what it meant to them. And for Uncharted, I mean, that game was not made to be a, a games for change, mental health experience, right? No, but absolutely not. It is a game that is so beautifully designed in many ways, but specifically in the story and the attention to detail with developing the characters to make Nathan Drake this relatable, apathetic guy. And while you're playing it, I mean, I think you, what you touched on is that you have a connection with Drake in such an intimate way because you played as him. I mean, you, you experienced his loss and his fears and his, uh, uh, his goals and what drives him and that became connected and and what you said is it had a positive impact on you. So that's that's just everything I love about video games. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. And I think that is, you know, there's there's many reasons why I love Nathan Drake. Um, and you know that that's one of them. You know, he just everything that he everything that that he is resembles so much with me in in many ways you know he he just he's a good guy who just wants to to be successful in what he does you know he doesn't want to be well known he doesn't want to be a celebrity he doesn't want to be famous way he just wants people to appreciate that what he does for others matters right and right. you know i think a lot of that resonated with me as well so have you played uncharted 4 I have that. You know what? It was. It's very difficult for me to choose which one's better, two or four. Totally. Um, I have a, a ranking list. Sometimes it changes depending <laughs> on what mood I'm in. But uh, yeah. they're 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 neck and neck. Yeah, absolutely. I think four was an unbelievable adventure. Um, it was. It just it was perfect for me from Naughty Dog. Um. You know, Last of Us are great. Last of Us 2, I, I haven't been able to pick up my PlayStation since completing Last of Us 2 because it was an incredibly emotional 
journey what a that was. What a oh, yeah, yeah. You know, um, it that that game has everything you would want from a story-driven game that will resonate with a lot of people. That will. It's just it's it's on another level to any emotional uh, attachment you will have within a game, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, you. Uncharted 4 is incredible. Um, I recently replayed it only, I don't know, five, six months ago. Yeah, yeah, and, same. And it's, it still just looks as beautiful now as it did three, four years ago. It's incredible. Uh, so I think yeah. for me, Uncharted 2 is, is my favorite game of all time. Um, I think Uncharted 4 is probably, a, in my opinion, a better game. Just mechanically, graphically, uh, even the story beats in a lot of ways. Uh, it really, it really just honed in on everything Uncharted and, and was perfect Uncharted, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah but Uncharted Two was was really the first experience. I think I actually played Two before One, um, and it was just the first time I ever really fell in love with a game and with a character in a game, and it it brought my connection to video games on a whole other level. So for me, just the experience I had playing that game, but Uncharted. Four, um, I think actually I resonate with more. And the reason is because in Uncharted 4, I won't get into too many spoilers in case you haven't played it, but in the beginning of the game, Nathan Drake has settled down. And he's married to Elena. Um, they have a nice, you know, quaint life. Uh, they, they have dinner together. They play Crash Bandicoots on the TV together. <laughs> got a, that was a beautiful Easter oh, egg. Oh, man, man. what a so cool, cool callback. What a cool callback. <laughs> and, you know, he, he has a, not a desk job necessarily, but, but something a mundane life, a mundane job. Um, and when I was playing Uncharted 4 for the last time, or for the, for the first time, I was in medical school. And I was just starting to think about a different path that I could take, um, you know, if, if, if I could do something other than residency and if I could follow my dreams and, and work in digital health and, and work in even in the video game industry. And it, it was that balance of, well, when is it okay to be selfish and to do things for myself and follow my own dreams versus maybe take the more secure path and, um, you know, and, and the responsibility, uh, I have a wife, I have a daughter, you know, what is my responsibility to them uh, to not take risks? And that is exactly what Drake battled with. He felt for Elena that he needed to stay in this life, but he couldn't help, you know, looking over his shoulder at his past, you know, memorabilia from his past adventures and, and playing with his toy guns in the attic and, <laughs> yeah. and, and being torn of that other life. And they're both important to him. They're both meaningful. Um, and in the end, you know, again, no, no spoilers, but how that played out with him and Elena and, and Elena being there to support him, much like my wife always supports me, uh, which is just an amazing thing. And, and that's how I connected so much in that game. So yeah, I think it's just, and again, it's just more than any movie, I think, because those experiences were my experiences. And, and that's, I think, through shared experience, that's how we, we achieve empathy, which is such a rare and valuable emotion uh, for human connection. Yeah, I think, I, I don't think anybody could have put that better. Uh, I think that was, you know, spot on the mark. I think, and with, character like i think i feel the thing with video games is the reason you connect with them so much more than movies and, and i am a huge movie buff um but the difference is is you are that character so right. you're living that character's life and you know there may be times in that character's journey that you connect to it and i think that's why nathan characters like nathan drake are so special to me personally is because I see a lot of me and him, not so much the thief side, obviously, but because <laughs> <laughs> that would be very wrong. 
Um, yeah, but, yeah. You know, well, more... we've all been through, like, I tried to adapt my wardrobe to only wear, uh, like, Henleys for a while, and, like, tuck it <laughs> into my belt, you know? I even got yeah, that ring yeah. necklace, I think, from the collector's edition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. And I, I, I remember wearing that to a gaming event once, and I realized that I am not Nathan Drake, and I look really stupid, so I probably shouldn't wear it. But I yeah, think it's, I tried it's... it to freshman year of college and realized, you know, if I... I should be careful. This is a new place for me. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. But yeah, no, just incredible experiences with games like that. Um, for me, Naughty Dog are up there with some of the best that oh, yeah. give you that give you that medium where you are able to connect with characters on a level that you are not with most uh, other mediums out there. Yeah, yeah. So, cool. Simon. Um, I want to be respectful of your time. I, I know that you have another engagement. Um, I want to finish up with just you sharing with the audience and myself uh, just a little bit more about your time and your role as an ambassador for Safe in Our World and what that uh, what that means. Uh, yeah. So you know, as I said, I was I was contacted to to become an ambassador, and you know, basically that were the guys that you know will share that that knowledge, uh, those outlets that you can go to, uh, you know, if you are having a tough time um, and, you know, share content that will help, you know, direct you on how you can yourself, um, you know, help start the process to, to building a better, better state of mental health. Um, you know, as an ambassador, I am very proud to be a part of a great team, an amazing bunch of people throughout the gaming industry that are given the opportunity to share our stories, share the content and be one of those points of contact where we can go, do you know what guys, look, if you're suffering and you need help, we can provide, you know, the initial process to help you you know, begin your journey to, to becoming, that you know, through, uh, like resources, referrals. Absolutely. Like yeah. That. Yeah. And, absolutely. and Safe in Our World also has that just everyone go check it out. I think it's really interesting, a curated list of uh, video games that they think are pro mental health. Um, yeah. So that, that's been really interesting. I'm work, working my way through them. I actually just put up a, a review online, uh, uh, an impact review, which is my new video game review series looking specifically what are the positive impacts that a game puts forth? Uh, so I just played um, Kind Words for the past uh, couple of weeks. Amazing. Which is, Amazing. what an experience. Um, Isn't it? Yeah, you, you know, everyone go check out the review, but, but just one thing that I put in there was that there was a reviewer who said it was the most difficult game of 2019, which is when it released. And I think that is just the perfect way to sum it up. Um, really beautiful, altruistic community support in that game. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. A uh, an experience like no other. Uh, yeah. But you know, um, th th those are the things that saving our world want to do. We want to provide, as you say, resources and outlets, content, and and basically anything that can help you with your state of mental health that can improve. You know, I still, you know, I go to that website all the time and go. You know, if I'm having a bad day, okay, what can I what can I do to just, you know, help brighten that mood, help, you know, push that inner happiness out of me, you know? And, there, you know, my biggest advice to anybody that is going through these tough times is something I was taught whilst playing Uncharted 2 uh, years and years ago was find that one thing a day that makes you smile. Maybe you've always wanted to see this movie, even if it's 20 years old. You know what sit down give yourself two hours watch the movie maybe yeah. you want to check out that new album but you've just been putting it off and putting it off sit down give yourself that and at that hour play that album you know maybe there's that game you want to try out go and try the game out right, uh, right or it could just be something as simple as going down the store and you know what i want to binge on chocolate today binge on <laughs> chocolate it makes you happy um so find your inner Nathan Drake. Find that one treasure that makes you happy every day. That's right. That's right. 
Simon, thank you so much. This has been such a pleasure for me to speak to you. Uh, if people want to follow you, check you out um, on, uh, on social media or, or your podcast, how can they do that? Sure. No, thank you very much. And again, I really appreciate, appreciate the invite. Um, it's been, been a lot of fun. But yeah, uh, you guys can check me out. So yeah, I do stuff. I've never talked about gaming a hell of a lot, but I do wrestling stuff as well. Uh, so yeah, the, you know, you can find me on Twitter, Simon H official. There's usually a lot of random stuff, a lot of wrestling, gaming, and just other stuff that I do on a daily basis. Uh, that's Simon H official. That's across everything, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, the podcast that I host is a wrestling podcast with, uh, some great in-ring talent. A lot of them you will notice have been in the likes of WWE, Impact, uh, you know, uh, AEW, et cetera. Uh, that is called Keep It Locked with Simon Hill. So Keep It Locked is a term that stuck with me through my TV days. At the end of every show, I would just sign off with Keep It Locked. Uh, and I, you know, decided to bring that into a podcast. Uh, there's merch available for that as well, which looks really cool. Got some nice designs there. Uh, but yeah, definitely check out the podcast if you're a wrestling fan. Uh, some really cool, captivating, fascinating interviews, uh, you know, that you kind of don't hear about uh, when these guys are in the ring. Uh, so definitely worth a definitely worth a check out there. Awesome. Sounds good. Well, thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, uh, you know, we're a new channel still. We really appreciate you guys coming along for the ride. Make sure to like and subscribe on whatever, uh, whatever channel or podcast that you're listening on. That helps us a lot. Um, and Please will... like and subscribe to this. Look, there's a button down here. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So <laughs> like and subscribe all around. Um, <laughs> yeah. We will see you next time. Uh, until then, game on and keep it locked.